All right, so to get started here, the first thing I'd like to talk about is a question that almost everybody has when they start learning JavaScript or are interested in doing so, and that is, what can you do with the JavaScript language, right? What is this language good for? Well, the good news there, if you've already decided to learn JavaScript, is that JavaScript can be used for pretty much everything. And while that's a bit of a simplification, it's really not that much of an exaggeration. Uh, there are really very few situations where uh, it's not possible to use JavaScript. There are a few situations where JavaScript might not be the best choice, which we'll talk about later on. But in general, if you want to program anything, you are able to do so in JavaScript, right? In other words, anything that you can do with other languages like Python or Java, you, you can also do in JavaScript. So just to go into a little bit more detail on the main categories of JavaScript development, uh, the first one is going to be front-end development. So Front-end development with JavaScript is basically going to be using JavaScript in the user's browser to create things like websites. And this can be done either using vanilla JavaScript, which is basically just JavaScript without any additional libraries that other people have written, or it can be done using existing libraries such as React or Angular, which are things that we'll talk about later on. So that's the front end, right? Writing JavaScript in a situation where it's going to be interacting with visual elements that users will be seeing. But you can also use JavaScript on the back end, right? And this is going to involve things like interacting with databases, managing file systems, uh, creating web servers, etc. And this is actually fairly new territory for JavaScript. We'll get into that in a little more detail later on, but really this is something that before, right, uh, let's say over a decade ago, you would have had to do with a different language, right? You would have had to learn a different language for the front end and the back end, but JavaScript can be used on both of those these days. Now, in addition to the front end and back end, JavaScript can also be used to develop mobile applications. Now, this is something that a lot of people don't realize because it used to be that, you know, if you wanted to write an iPhone application, let's say you had to learn Swift. And trust me, as a previous Swift developer, working with Swift and developing for a single platform, right, uh, for the iPhone platform was unpleasant, right? It meant that you had to learn a completely different language in order to write apps, but you don't have to do that anymore because JavaScript allows us to do this using, there's a few different technologies that let us do this, but the main one is going to be React Native, which I'll talk about in more detail in just a minute as well. And finally, the last main category of JavaScript development is going to be for writing desktop applications. Now, this is different from front-end applications because desktop applications actually you actually download them onto your computer and run them, right? They're not something that you open up in a browser. So, you know, this is a situation where before JavaScript came into the picture, you would have had to write desktop applications using Java or C++ perhaps. But with JavaScript now, as well as some other technologies that I'll talk about later on, uh, we're now able to write desktop applications using JavaScript. So anyway, these are really the four main buckets of JavaScript development, and chances are you'll find yourself working on more than one of these at a time, right? For instance, if you write front-end and back-end code, that's the that's generally what full-stack developers do. So in other words, you'll use JavaScript on both the front-end and back-end. Uh, that may also include developing for mobile and desktop as well. I've definitely worked on teams where we use a single code base to develop for all four of these platforms at once. But in general, JavaScript developers, at least at first, tend to focus on one of these things, right? So maybe they choose to develop for the back end and write web servers or some kind of back end management system. Uh, maybe they choose to focus on more of the visual aspect of things and write front end applications. Or maybe they go the mobile or desktop route and develop applications for those using JavaScript. So anyway, that's just something to keep in mind that JavaScript can really be used for all of these things. All right, and additionally, while these are just the main buckets that you can develop for in JavaScript, 
A uh, good rule of thumb is that pretty much anywhere where you can write code, you can run JavaScript. And as I said before, there are some situations where you're not necessarily going to want to use JavaScript, right? Where JavaScript might not be the best choice for the situation. Uh, and for this, I'm talking about situations like really performance intensive applications where you really need the ability to optimize behind the scenes and control the exact performance of the language. JavaScript doesn't really allow you to do that the same as other languages like C++ might allow you to do it. So anyway, just something to keep in mind. These are the four main buckets. So what I wanna do now is just go through each one in turn and discuss it a little bit more deeply. Just talk about some of the main technologies that you might hear about in each bucket and so on. So with the front end, all right, when you're using JavaScript to develop front end applications, which again are going to run inside the user's browser, chances are you're gonna be using one of a few main technologies. Now, uh, some of the most common ones that you've probably heard of are React. Right? React is currently the most popular front-end library that's used for creating front-end applications, and it is really based off of JavaScript. So you need to know JavaScript first before you move on to learning these technologies such as React. Uh, another one that you might hear about a lot is Angular. That's just sort of a competitor to React, if you will. And uh, there are some other ones that have come on the scene fairly recently, uh, such as Vue. Another one is Svelte, which I'm a really big fan of. And there are some older ones as well, such as Ember.js. And uh, really all of these are just sort of different solutions to the same problem of how to efficiently develop a front-end application using JavaScript. So I'm not gonna go too much into detail on any one of these. In fact, I have courses on pretty much all of these except for Svelte currently, although I'd like to put that in at some point. So if you wanna check those out, I highly recommend, as I said, learning JavaScript first, but these are some of the technologies that you can move to once you've mastered the basics of JavaScript. So anyway, in addition to all of these technologies, which are all libraries or frameworks that you can use to develop front-end applications more easily, you may also hear about something called vanilla JavaScript, right? Or vanilla JS as it's sometimes referred to. Now, vanilla JS is basically just a fancy term for using JavaScript without any external libraries, right? So this is really just a JavaScript purist kind of thing where people want to develop their applications from the ground up and have control over every part of their application without relying on external libraries. Now, the reason that there's a term for it instead of just saying regular JavaScript without any libraries is because as a rule, JavaScript developers and many other developers as well for that matter, have found that managers tend to like libraries, right? They, they, they tend to look at libraries as a solution to this or that problem. And so vanilla JS was created as a term to use so that managers think you're using a library when actually you're just building it from the ground up. Okay, so it's sort of a, a way to get around corporate bureaucracy, if you will. All right, so those are the main technologies and terms in the front end universe of JavaScript. Again, there's other courses that I've already published on those if you wanna check those out, but I highly recommend learning regular JavaScript first, at least the basics of it. Uh, so let's talk about the back end, right? The back end in JavaScript is primarily based off of using a runtime called Node.js. Now, let me just talk about that in a minute here after I write back end, there we go. So Node.js, as I said, is a JavaScript runtime, and we'll go into more detail on what that means later on, but basically Node.js allows us to run JavaScript outside of the browser. So that's something I didn't mention previously when we were talking about the front end, but JavaScript was originally created to run inside the user's browser, right? So in other words, if you had something like Internet Explorer or Chrome or Firefox or whatever kind of browser your operating system tends to use, then that browser would include the runtime necessary for running JavaScript code, right? So in other words, if you wanted to run JavaScript code, you would just download the browser and run the code inside the browser. Now that's great when you wanna run JavaScript code on the front end, right? If you wanna create a website using JavaScript, let's say, 
But when you want to do things like create web servers using JavaScript, that really didn't work, right? Because in that case, you would have to have a server running inside the browser, which just isn't really a good idea. So Node.js, as I've said, is a runtime that allows us to run JavaScript outside the browser. And there's a number of other libraries that go along with Node.js that make it easier to perform specific tasks, right? One that you'll probably hear of a lot is called Express. And Express is a library that just makes it a lot easier to write web servers using JavaScript, right? It is to the back end what things like React are to the front end. It, it just takes a lot of the nitty gritty details away from the developer so that you don't have to worry about them and can focus on the application that you're trying to build. All right, Express and some of the other related technologies we'll cover in a lot more detail later on. But anyway, that's the back end. If you want to develop back end code in JavaScript, chances are you're going to need to install Node.js, which is something that I'll cover in a little while. And again, that just allows you to run JavaScript code in a similar way to how you'd run code for like Python or Java. All right, so moving on to the mobile side of things, right? If you want to write iPhone apps or Android apps or whatever kind of application uh, using JavaScript, chances are you're going to be using a library called React Native. Now, there are other technologies out there. One that you might hear of is Ionic, which is pretty popular. And another technology called NativeScript uh, serves a similar purpose. But in general, I've, I personally have found that React Native is going to be hands down the easiest with the obvious caveat that in that case, you would have to learn React as well, since React Native kind of builds on the shoulders of the React library. But in general, if you're gonna write mobile applications using JavaScript, you're gonna be using a technology similar to these technologies that I've talked about here. All right, now the interesting thing about developing mobile apps using JavaScript is that in general, if you do things right, this actually allows us to share code between our front end and our mobile apps, right? So uh, I've definitely worked on projects before, as I said, that have a single code base that you simply build in different ways, and you can publish that either as a front end browser application or as a mobile app. And that's obviously way beyond the scope of what we're talking about right now, but the idea that you can have a single code base that can be built in order to uh, publish different types of applications is pretty cool in my opinion. So you just have one code base and you can publish that either as a front end application or as an iPhone or Android or whatever application, as I said. All right, so anyway, that's mobile development with JavaScript. I'm not gonna go into much more detail on that right now. So let's cover the final bucket so to speak, of JavaScript development, and that is desktop development, right? So in other words, creating desktop applications that you can open up in the same way that you open up things like Chrome or Microsoft Word or whatever, right? That's all possible using JavaScript now as well, right? So you can develop desktop applications with JavaScript. And in general, the most popular technology for doing this is called Electron. All right, so Electron, if you hear about it, basically what Electron does is it takes front-end applications, such as React applications, and it builds them in such a way that they can be opened and downloaded and installed just like desktop applications. And in fact, an application that uses Electron in order to achieve this functionality that you've almost definitely heard of is Slack. All right, and I believe similar applications like Discord use Electron as well. And the nice thing here is that really these Electron applications that you can open up on your computer look and behave almost identically to how you'd expect a desktop application written in some other language to work as well, right? So if you were to write it in JavaScript or C++ or Swift, uh, you know, you're going to save yourself a lot of trouble just using Electron and JavaScript because you'll already know JavaScript, right? You won't have to go and learn another programming language just to develop a desktop application. All right, so anyway, we've covered the four main buckets of JavaScript application here. Just to, to give you an idea of a few of the other types of JavaScript development that you might wanna do at some point. I've seen JavaScript used for things like Internet of Things, right? Where you basically just write JavaScript on a Raspberry Pi and, and you can use that to specify the logic for running your Raspberry Pi. 
JavaScript can be used for things like wearable devices, and these aren't as popular as they used to be, like, you know, things like the Google Glass, but, uh, you know, it can be used for those kinds of things as well. Essentially, uh, JavaScript can be used to write applications for anything that runs code, obviously within reason. There are certain things like uh, integrated circuit boards, right, an Arduino. You're probably not going to be able to use that one with JavaScript. You'll probably have to learn C or whatever languages those are using these days. But again, JavaScript in general can be used for pretty much any application that you'll want to create. So I hope this has been informative for you and I'd like to thank you for viewing.